So my next soap that I'm going to make is inspired on Monet lilies and I'm using this picture as a reference and it's not going to look the same, I know that, but that is my inspiration. And I do have a link to the recipe in the description. And the first thing that I'm going to do is that I'm going to mix my fats there at 110 with the oils. And now they are at 98 or at 105. I do have some of the cocoa butter, that's what you see here, that didn't completely melt. But I figured that could be my super fat. So I'm going to leave it as that. And this black thing, I think it's from the charcoal powder that was in this container. And I'm going to add the lye water. This is at room temperature. At this point, it's at 88. And just slowly, I'm going to add it so there are no splashes. And I'm going slow. And this container is actually pretty full. I probably should have used a bigger container because this is a um, quite large batch. So I'm gonna see how it goes. I, I may be able to use this. I'll just have to be very careful. So first I'm just mixing it with the spoon and I can see there's already some color variation and then I'm going to use the stick blender. Okay, here we go. So I'm almost at the point of emulsification and perhaps even light trace. Okay, so I'm at the light trace point at this point. So it's time to first I just give it a burst there so it's easier to clean. And what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna add the fragrance. And I am using um let's see, not this one. I'm using eucalyptus, spearmint, eo, and fragrance oil mix. And I need to use 3.6 ounces, which means that if this weighs 7.77, .77, I need to subtract 3.6. So first I'm going to subtract the 3, so I need 477, which pretty much, it might be all of it. Now this fragrance oil is supposed to behave well and it's not supposed to cause any discoloration. So I'm almost at 4.77 by 67, so that's 3 ounces. So if I remove 0 0.6, I'm going to be left with about 4.10. And of course, I could just weight this separately, but I like to reduce the number of dishes that I'm going to wash. You know, this is pretty much all of it. I shouldn't even have worried about weighing it. Yeah, because this is four ounces. And I guess I used a little bit at some point. Or they don't give you a full weight on it. 
all right so then I'm going to mix the fragrance so that it incorporates to the mix and now like you saw in the painting before Monet was very he was one of the first impressionists impressionism's artists before that the school was the realism so in the painting it's not really a lot of detail he was more concerned about capturing the color of the scene and I believe this lily pond was something that was in the property where he lived and if I remember correctly he even worked with the gardener to introduce new species of lilies or plants to it to improve on it to improve on the design of the pond okay I don't see any more of the oil dispersed or floating around it seems to be incorporated really well now it smells really nice really fresh and I picked this fragrance oil because I figure it will it's kind of foresty type and I figure if you're uh -oh. in the pond in a pond like this one it looks like it's in the middle of the forest so it might smell like that so now I'm just going to mix it there was some oil in this container from earlier when I was measuring the rice bran oil so I'm just going to do two different shades of blue and then a little bit of green and the flowers, the lilies, I've made with um, soap dough and I will have a video for that as well and I'm gonna post it on the description and I should probably go get my mold at this point which is here and do it using this um, drawer so first I'm going to the smallest one is going to be the green color and I'm using green chrome oxide pigment so I'm adding about a half a teaspoon of this and then for the blue I have quite a bit of choices Okay, I'm also going to get some blue, I mean some purple, not a whole lot. And this is mica, and for mica, I'm using about three quarters, maybe one teaspoon, because this purple tends to be very pale otherwise, and I'm using Purple Galaxy Mica Powder. And then as far as the blue, I will be using... Um, aquamarine blue pigment and then I'm also going to mix it with um, some of this maybe which is azure blue mica I'm using about a half a teaspoon but actually I also want to use some of this so I may use that on that side I did forget to um, cut this now the good thing about Monet painted paintings is that you are supposed to see them from a distance and when you saw them up close there wasn't a lot of detail but because he wasn't into the realism in there but since this is soap and people are going to be like holding it in their hands that's why I created the little inside of soap dough so they'll be more realistic looking 
Okay, so now I'm going to mix the colors with the stick blender. from light to dark. Okay, I know that's noisy. So it looks like I'm reaching medium trace now. I'm gonna go with the purple next. And I know that these colors look dark, like the purple may look dark, but it's going to lighten up after it hardens. And then I'll do the blue. And actually I think I want that blue to be a lot darker than this. So I'm going to do the per the green and then I'm going to come back with more pigment on that one. Okay, that's a good shade of green. Lapis Blue Mica and since I already had the pigment that should help, the mica should help with the coloring. to get rid of some of the air bubbles that I incorporated. And I'm also going to tap it once it's in this soap. But if I tap at this point, I can see some of the bubbles coming up to the surface. Alright, it's time to pour. I think I'm going to put this color at the bottom, at the base. Like this, and then I'll do the blues. I think I want this darker one on the edge. Then we have this one somewhere here, and there. I'm playing a little bit of purple. And the green I'm just going to put at the very, very end on top. sure how I'm going to um, do the painting simulation part yet so but I do know that I want it to be blended um, so one of the things that Monet was good at was uh, capturing colors so he would often paint the same scene at different times of the day and at different times of the year to capture the different 
colors that he will see at those points. And he was fascinated really with colors. I remember that I read that when he, one of his, I think his first wife was dying, as she laid on her deathbed, he could see the color of death on her face and he painted her at that point, either at that point or after she had died, I'm not quite sure, to capture the purple color of her face, which I think is kind of creepy. That's what it was. Okay. Then I think I want some light colors in the middle. So I'm going to put some of this here. And one time, at some point, I did do a painting inspired on a similar uh, Monet painting of Lily's. I like it. But, um, it's the kind of thing that it's only good. It looks better when you see it from a distance than when you get up close. Okay, I think I'm using most of it now. And I may have too much green, but we'll see. I may add some on the edges. But I'm probably going to mix this now. I do want it to be blended. I don't know. On the top. I don't want too much of a color um, differentiation for this one. So that it, I think it will simulate the painting better. If it's like this. I do need to start adding the green. The green is going to be reflecting two things. One will be the um, and I guess at the bottom it's not going to be very mixed but that's fine. One of the things is that uh, there were trees around the pond and there was a reflection of them in the water and that might be too thick. So it was in the forms of um, lines that you see on the painting. And then there is the green from the water lily leaves. So that's what I'm trying to do here. But of course, I'm not going to do an exact representation of either. Just close enough. And it's gotten quite thick at this point. So I may just do the rest of it on the edges, the blue. Because otherwise it's not going to blend very well, not if I delay it over. So I'm going to, I'm just mixing it and giving it a, a more fluid look, a blended look with the green. Let me grab something to clean this. Okay. 
So right now there's not a very open surface. So let me do some of this. So the remaining green, what I'm going to use, I'm just going to use it to do the um, water lily pads. Or then I'm going to try to create more differentiation with just this. You cannot really see it. But that might work. And then I'm going to... It's going to be time to start adding the lilies. So I'm going to just add little pieces of the green like this in the spots where I'm going to put them. Might have been better if this was a different shade of green. But this will work too. And I do want to bring out some of the lighter blue at the bottom in some spots. So I might do this, just drag some of it in some areas. Like I guess I only have blue there. I guess it's going to be more texture than I intended it to be, but that's fine. I do think his paint is more texture too. It's beginning to look more like an abstract painting. When I had poured that as the pads for the lilies, pretty much destroyed at this point. That's fine. Okay. I think that's pretty enough. Where do I have the lilies in the box? There they go. I hope I have enough. And I think I'm gonna put the uh, I'm gonna put them where they make contrast in colors. Like this pink ones will go where the darker area is. I do have some white ones. And I'll continue putting them in. And in the morning, I should be able to cut this. So I'll film that part. attempt to cut this actually first to remove it next time that I use this mold I'm gonna have to line it because I'm getting a clean release on the edges but I'm not getting a full release on the back last time I used it I broke my soap actually 
when I was trying to remove it. And I hope I don't break this one either. Or that I don't break it too. And this may take a while. So I'm going to put something. Let me see what. <clears throat> this. Yeah. I'll put that in the middle so that it catches the soap as it falls and it doesn't hit the. And I'm just going to try to break the seal slowly from the edges. It smells really nice. It smells. I can smell the. Eucalyptus, very strong. It just doesn't want to release it. part I'm gonna fast forward so you don't get you don't get bored watching seeing my struggle with this makeshift mold. Okay so I Forced out the soap out of the mold, and I had this part that was really stuck to it. But um, it is soft, it's, so I should be able to just put it back in here, and it will stick to it. Of course, it would be good if I knew exactly where it went. Let me see. I think this part was here. Except I don't remember where I took it from. Yes. So this part is from this corner. So all I'm going to do is that I'm going to um, fish it out and then I'm just going to put it in here and then I'm going to press it. And it should stick together fine. One time I had a soap that was completely broke in half. And I had just unmolded it. It's actually the almond lilies. And then I just put it back together and squeeze it. And within a few days, if even if I tried to put it apart, I couldn't. It was really well stuck together by then. Alright, so I finished patching it up and I'm going to add some alcohol and then I'm just rubbing it lightly and if when it dries, if it still looks rough, uh, I'm going to smooth it out with a knife and I may even chop some pieces off. But for now I think it should be fine. That I usually only give my soaps away, so I'm not overly concerned about this. But um, if if I happen to sell them to somebody, then I will clean them up a bit. Some of my lilies fell off, so I'm putting alcohol and I'm gonna push them in, and they fell off because. Um, I don't think this one goes here though. Because they were, um, I was having such a hard time removing them, removing the soap from the mold. But the soap is soft enough that I should be able to just push them in. And because they are hard, 
they're not breaking. So I'm just gonna push them in to sort of force them to stay. If they insist on coming off, then I may have to use some melt and pour to sort of glue them to the top. But I am pretty confident that this should be enough. This one I think I'm gonna break one petal. Just not good. But um this is pretty much it, I guess. I'm missing one. Oh, they fell on the mold. I wonder if this white one is the one that goes in here. I'm not getting a good much yet. let this dry for a little bit before I cut it. Or maybe I'll use this the recipe. And this is the cutter that I'm going to try to cut them with. I tried it earlier and I was not very successful but Maybe because this is a bigger soup, it will be a different story. And I'm trying to see where I have the marks. I did do some marks of where I want the cuts to be. So the idea is that I will just... I think I need to make it shorter. Like this. Then just cut through it. This is not easy. I'm gonna have to go get my knife. Alright, I couldn't find my knife, but I did find this cutter, so I'm gonna use this instead. And I just need to do two cuts here. And as you can see, there's a lot of soda ash on it. But I'm going to clean it up. So thank you for watching. And this is what this soap looks like at the end. Um, if you want to receive notifications, go ahead and subscribe. Bye.